Well, hello, my paranormal peeps. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. I am also the host of the Deep Woods Paranormal podcast, along with my wife, Amanda. We investigate everything paranormal, uh, be it Bigfoot, ghosts, whatever. Uh, we research it. So, I am trying to get rid of the glare. <laughs> it's not working. I've got lights on everywhere shining on me and unfortunately it's casting a shadow so turn this off <clears throat> anyways all right so tonight we're going to kind of talk about what we've been working on in the background we're working on uh, investigating with other paranormal teams we're working on setting up events with other paranormal teams and other production companies uh, we're working on trying to get a film crew put together that we can afford <laughs> And uh, to have them follow us around and through the forest and whatever else in the pitch black, which is going to be interesting. And um, we're also uh, just working on other events too, uh, ghost hunting events that we're going to do. So uh, lots of stuff coming down the pike. Let me share my screen with you. And we'll go here. All right. So I've kind of talked about this location before. Uh, this is the San Jacinto uh, Jail Museum. It's in Cold Springs, Texas. Uh, an amazing location. I can't even tell you. We've heard jail cells clank together. We've heard the sound of keys clicking as like somebody's walking by. We've heard muffled voices. We've heard, um, I've had something tell me not to come up the stairs or whatever it said and I caught it on video you can guys can go to our YouTube channel check that out deep it's paranormal uh, but uh, yeah I mean this place and then also you've got a haunted schoolhouse and the one side of the schoolhouse is just insane it is just insane I mean there's just I mean you go over there the first time we were over there we kind of play with the keyboard the key the excuse me the typewriters not the keyboards the typewriters and as we were kind of touching them all of a sudden the k2 started lighting up and we had a spirit box on at the time and it said please do not touch the key <laughs> the, the uh, typewriters <laughs> and we asked you don't like that and it said no so um, We've been in there a couple more times since then. We've asked the whoever's attached to the typewriters, and there's like 10 of them or something like that. Um, you know, are we allowed to touch the typewriters? And we've heard, please don't. So, yeah, I mean, they're they're very active over in that schoolhouse. There's a lot of stuff um, that they brought in to try and, and put this schoolhouse back together. They've had a lot of donations to the San Jacinto uh, Jail Museum. Um, if you're able to, please do go donate to them. Um, the people that run it are extremely nice people. And uh, they spend a lot of time, their own time, essentially keeping this place up, keeping it running, and uh, allowing people to come in and enjoy it as well. So, um, anyways, uh, you've got the post office where there seems to be a female spirit that I believe she was a postal worker and we go in there and we've had interactions with her a couple of times uh, and then you have the old train depot and the old train depot is really cool um, I keep seeing shadows kind of where the clerk would stand to take your tickets or give you tickets when you pay and then we've had a lot of k2 hits over there as well had a couple of things come through this spirit box that we could understand and stuff like that in the courtyard area of this location because um, the buildings are all kind of separated shadows dart around everywhere this me this jail uh, they hung at least 300 people here hung 300 people not just inside the jail but out on the grounds so there was just there's just a lot of activity uh, on and off inside the buildings and outside the buildings as well so what we're going to be doing is on November 26th, around 8 p.m., we're going to start, and we'll go to about midnight. Uh, it's going to be $30 a person, which is, you know, just helps us basically pay for the venue and then help them essentially, you know, get a little bit of money to 
you know, keep the uh, museum going. So that's that's coming up. Um, if you're looking over my left shoulder here, keep your eye on those two dolls. Uh, we've had a lot of real weird activity lately. In fact, we've had a male entity here. If you listen to our Amanda's podcast, you heard a male voice say, please help me. And it was almost clear as day. Anyways, so yeah, this is the old San Jacinto Jail uh, Museum that we'll be doing an event in. Um, four hours, uh, and then we'll get to investigate all the buildings and stuff like that. So that'll be fun. Um, a lot of activity all throughout the property. Should be a cool location to uh, come out and investigate with us. Uh, and if you're new to ghost hunting or you've never ghost hunted before, uh, we will provide you with some K2 meters, and those are just sen very sensitive EMF detectors, meaning that they just pick up energy in the air and uh, just anything can set those things off. They're super sensitive, so we have to be really careful about making sure our cell phones are off and we're not close to anything electronical. Um, but most of the jail, it doesn't have a lot of EMF in it. We've swept it so many times looking for EMF, and there's only a couple of places that have high EMF. So that said, if you'd like to come out with us, um, please come on to our website, deepwoodsparanormal.com. And you can go to the this page here. This is our public investigations events. Um, if you're interested right now, the Brian Ghost Walk is going on in downtown Brian here in, in uh, Brian, Texas. Really cool tour. Um, the young lady that does it is, is amazing. Uh, she's a good friend of mine and stuff like that. So she's very knowledgeable. She knows the the history of location. Yeah, she has a lot of. She takes a lot of time and a lot of pride. And learning things about the locations so I'd highly recommend you come here um, we don't get anything for this but she is a friend of mine I want to make sure that the downtown Brian ghost walks do well uh, you will get to investigate the paranormal you will get also get to use k2s and stuff like that and uh, if you want more information you can you can go to BrianGhostWalk.com, or you can contact her directly and or you can come on here and book and, and get information as well so all right, let's move on. Uh, on the 22nd here coming up, uh, Amanda and I will be going to the um, OP Ply House. This place, from everything I've read, written, sorry, everything I've read, is amazing. It's supposed to be extremely active. Um, multiple ghosts, supposedly. Uh, supposedly, there's two homes. So front is the main place. This is what you're looking at is actually, I think, the back house. Both of them have activity, and then there's also supposedly um, activity all throughout the grounds. And uh, this is actually being run by Dr. Heidi Hoke and her husband. Um, they've actually lived here for about 50 years. Uh, the house was originally built in the 1900s, and it was recorded as a Texas historical landmark in 1982. Um, so let's see, I'm going to scroll down here. Okay. So this is, let's see, let me find this guy's name. So the, let's see, the, the owner of the house, uh, before the hoax moved in was the, uh, Thorpe family. And they were extremely religious and conservative. They lived in the house for about 50 years. And then Mr. Thorpe died in, in the house. And he was an attorney. He basically stayed in one room most of the time. And uh, supposedly he haunts that area. So let's cruise down here. I think there's like 20 some odd ghosts that supposedly... I didn't... I read through this, but it's also... Just very inf a lot of information. So, anyways, let's keep going. So that's the ply house. I'm going to go into it a little further. Um, the OP Ply House in Manolta, Texas. Manolas, Texas. Excuse me. I am half asleep for some reason. My brain's not working. Um, basically, was is is all over the place. If you do a search for the OP Ply House. Uh, and look up hauntings and stuff like that. It's it's very very active. 
Sorry about all the ads. Not exactly sure how to close that one. All right. <laughs> and another one pops up. How funny. All right. So um, this was a local craftsman house that reflects the influences of the Queen Anne style in the wraparound veranda, um, conical tower, second floor porch, and, and gabled roof. Looking at this house, I invested to get a house like this in Los Angeles, and it was definitely active. Unfortunately, the house was kind of made into apartments, so we couldn't go upstairs, but we could hear someone walking up and down the stairs, and her neighbor wasn't home. She asked her. So that's pretty cool. So it says, being one of the most haunted houses in East Texas, the house is extremely active, and there have been several investigations here, done here by Haunted Rooms of America. The spirits are num are the spirits are numbered in double digit digits, including a Civil War soldier named David Akin, who has deemed himself the protector of his family and the house. Uh, there are many child spirits here, which love to pray tricks on you, and their nanny is here as well. Um, the property boasts of Spiritual Vortex, which serves as a revolving door for spiritual activity, which sometimes is great and sometimes not as much. Uh, it says there's also been some negative spirit spiritual energy as well. And uh, unnerve. Let's see. Some negative spiritual energy as well. And unnerving experiences in one of the cottages. One of the owner's parents, who were longtime owners of the house, are buried on the property, and another family member is under the gazebo. Wow. If you're looking for a more adventure, adventurous ghost hunt, this property is one of the best in Minolta. So, what's going to happen is Amanda and I are going to go to this house, and we are going to... Some were sitting out on the porch somewhere and be doing a live podcast probably or just podcasting off and on. And there's going to be other groups of people that are going to go in and investigate this house and uh, take a tour or whatever. Here, let me open this up. Okay, so this is October 22nd. It's the OP Ply House and it basically it's paranormal tours. Um, they're selling tickets basically for ghost tours and stuff like that. It's going to go from 3.30 p.m. till 1 a.m. the next morning. And Amanda and I are going to be out there basically just hanging out, talking to people, um, doing interviews for anybody who has a pers personal experience or if they get some kind of evidence, um, we'll try and show it on video. And essentially what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll be either live broadcasting that or we'll be, we will be posting that as a as a uh, podcast for you guys to watch and listen to uh, that might be a quite a uh, long uh, podcast so it's probably going to be broken up to into several uh, weeks um, like a half an hour here half an hour there so we'll just see hopefully we have a lot of activity and uh, we're able to document or people are able to document quite a bit um, after 1 a.m a man and I, and maybe some other people, uh, if you're listening to the podcast, you live in the area, and you want to come out, and you buy your tickets and everything, um, you can come out with us and meet us, meet and greet, and then also, um, we're going to probably be picking a couple people to stay with us afterwards to help investigate the house as well. We're going to do a full investigation, our own full investigation of the house, and see what we can document. So that should be fun. Um, that's coming down the pike here on the 22nd. Also, um, I've talked to the owner of the Normandy Inn. And that's the house where at the end of the video, the spirit box would not stop squawking. It just kept saying, you need to leave. You need to go. It's, your it's time to leave. Blah, blah. And this is all a female voice. And then I was picking up and I, was, I had the camera facing the door, the front door, and that door's heavy. It's not like you can, it just blows open in the wind or anything like that. Um, it's a solid wood door. And 
I was standing there and the door and you can see the door handle and right before you see that you see two little heads pop by it's the funniest thing <laughs> the little kids that live there there's two little kids uh, spirits that live there there's a family essentially it's this mom and dad possibly and two little kids anyway so the female entity whoever she is um, was telling me it's time to go and she finally got to the point where she was so upset with me she literally opened the front door and slammed it shut my back was to the door the camera caught the whole thing and I thought it was just them banging around upstairs because this is three levels it's uh, quite a big place I think it's 27 rooms or something like that not including the kitchen and everything the bedrooms on um, this in this old mansion so um, if you haven't checked out our Normandy Inn Let's see if I can find it. Haunted Norman Investigation, yeah. So here's the, the paranormal investigation right here. Um, oops. Let me get out of here. Getting lots of eye contact. I feel like this is going well. Okay, Just so. Yeah, here's the video here. If you guys want to come check it out, it's called The Paranormal Investigation at the Scary Haunted Normandy Inn. Uh, it says Ghost Hunters Full Episode. We're going to be going through, uh, and Amanda and I are talking about, we're trying to set this up. It's in, it's in the very beginning stages of being set up. We're going to be possibly spending the night in this location. Now, granted, there's no running water. There is no toilets there's no nothing so after about 10 o'clock everything out there is closed um, and the only thing that happens is basically tour guides come by and talk about the house but uh, this place is is interesting I almost spent the night by myself in in that hotel in the old Normandy Inn um, I was thinking about it I brought a cot and all this other stuff and uh, the first night I was there, I just got the weirdest sensation. It was just a weird vibe. I was there by myself. I'm pretty sure that door opened and closed on its own that night. What the problem with the place is there's no power. So essentially, um, we had to put out, I think, eight EM pumps all throughout the levels. You know, I think we put them out in hallways and stuff like that so we could energize the house. And it wasn't until the next day that we went back that the house was so energized. There was so much energy finally that the spirits were acting, uh, acting out and communicating with us and having fun. And we were communicating with the little kids upstairs. We were playing hide and seek. And I think one of the little kids actually pops out of the door. You can kind of see it in this video. Um, but yeah, so this is a cool, this is a cool, um, video if you want to come watch this you can kind of catch up on what's going on um, nobody has ever legally investigated the Normandy Inn there's a video on YouTube of a gentleman climbing up the uh, wall and going through a window and I've been right where he was he got turned around couldn't find his way out thought he heard something freaked out and then they basically ran back out the same way he came in but uh, there's been a lot of squatters and a lot of other things that happened. Um, the place has essentially fell into ruins the last time um, because of uh, hurricane. I don't can't remember what hurricane was, but it came. It basically the the ocean rose. I think 12 feet or something like that, all the way up to the basically the ceiling, and uh, destroyed the bottom portion of the house. And uh, so the brothers that owned it basically were had a hell of a time getting back into business after that and they essentially um, left it and, and basically sold it and moved on and and this house has been in the current owner's family for 20 some odd years it's just sitting abandoned but nobody has permission to go in there except for the workers that work there and uh, now us we've we got permission to go and check it out so we may actually bring one of the owners with us the next time we go in there just because he's a non-believer which is awesome i love non-believers 
Um, I love to have skeptics come and have an experience. You know, I'm not there to prove ghosts do and don't do or don't exist. I just want, you know, if you want to have an experience, you know, come out with us and we'll, hopefully you'll have some kind of experience where you can say that couldn't be anything else. But I don't know how many times I've said that. Um, you have to have your own experience. You know, you can't just rely on me saying something or Amanda saying something or somebody else saying something. You have to have experience where you can say that couldn't be anything else. But so that's what's coming down the pike. We have... Um, Basically, we have the uh, OP Pile House coming up uh, on the 22nd um, on November. Where to go? Uh, on November 26th, we will be doing the ghost hunt at the San Jacinto Museum, um, San Jacinto Jail Museum. Excuse me. We might do a little bit of live streaming on Facebook for that. Uh, if you want to find us on, on uh, Facebook, either look up Matt Harvey, Deep Woods Paranormal, or just look up Deep Woods Paranormal. You should be able to find us. Um, we might even do that live on uh, on our uh, YouTube channel as well. So, and, uh, so yeah, and then we have the Normandy in that we're trying to figure out when we're going to fit that in. Uh, it's either, it's either going to happen right after Halloween or right before uh, unfortunately, Halloween night is a uh, weekday, I think. I think it's a second. Um, so, let me look. October 31st is, yeah, it's a Monday. So, we might try and get out there on the 29th. That might be a time that we go out there. And if you guys are interested in doing this, um, please contacting us. Please contact us. We're always looking for people to come out and investigate with us. Um, my personal cell number is 979-250-0072. I don't care if everybody has it. It's it's already all over the internet. So my number is not hard to find. But um, yeah, so we're always looking for people to investigate with us, be it ghosts, Bigfoot, UFO, whatever. Uh, or if you're a witness, we'd love to have you on the show. We're always looking for new people to come on and and, and discuss what happened to them uh, paranormally and uh, sometimes we interview other people also in the paranormal world but uh, we really like to hear your stories because they're interesting and they kind of validate our stories if you will so there's no judgment on this show we don't want anybody being negative towards anybody who comes on or us uh, we just want to keep it positive and fun and uh, we want everybody to enjoy the show. And uh, if there's anything that we can do to make the show better, let us know. Uh, if there's certain topics that you guys want us to talk about, uh, please let us know. Again, you have my number. We're all over social media. Uh, you can comment on our YouTube channel uh, or on our uh, TikTok channel. Um, if you can find us over there, it's all Deep Woods Paranormal. If you want to look it up, or Deep Woods Paranormal team. Some of it actually may come up under Deep Woods Paranormal Texas. So, yeah, we uh, we will be doing a lot of stuff coming up. We have a lot of investigations coming up. We're going to be going out Bigfooting here, I think, this coming weekend. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going yet and who's going with me. But I'm going to go find somewhere to go do some kind of Bigfoot exploration, uh, hopefully at night and see if we can experience anything out there uh, right now the problem is that a lot of the places that we go to do bigfoot research here in texas are also open for hunting so it's it's right now it's kind of like a you have to be severely careful people shoot when they hear bigfoot calls and i've noticed it in a lot of places there's a lot of gunfire that happens as soon as Somebody hears a, a scream or a whoop or anything like that. So safety is my number one priority. Uh, I don't want anybody getting hurt or killed. So we just have to be very careful about how we go about that. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you guys so, so much for listening. And uh, thank you to all the new um, people that we've gotten following us now. 
Uh, we're going crazy with likes and, and people um, joining our podcast and listening to it and downloading it. So we really appreciate you guys. You have a good one. Uh, and Amanda, hopefully we'll talk to you on Wednesday about her ghost stories. And then Friday, of course, is our Bigfoot only podcast. I might have some more information for you guys about where we're going to be going, what we're going to be doing um, as far as Bigfoot research goes this weekend. So we'll have more information for you there. If you guys can do me a favor as well, um, like this if you can like it, heart it, whatever. Um, and then also please share this on your social media. Um, we're growing and growing and growing, and we really want to have people um, – you know, continue to, um, I'm going to come back on here so you can see. Oh, that scared me. I looked over my shoulder. The, <laughs> the dolls were gone. Oh my gosh. I just moved my chair. Um, so yeah, we, we just really need everybody to please help share and like, and, uh, give us likes on, on YouTube. And then if you want to comment on our YouTube, I appreciate that too. Um, we don't mind constructive criticism and stuff like that. And yes, that is a camera right up here that stays on in this room when we're not in here because we have activity that happens in this room um which is fine i mean it's just kids there's a plan um i don't know who the male entity is we're going to get to the bottom of that soon i've got to uh, work on that and figure out who he is but anyways you guys have a great night and uh we'll talk to you soon. Catch y'all later.